Hello, welcome back to Dream Daddy, a with dad dating simulator with me, Paul Rudd. <laughs> hot dad, Paul Rudd. With me, severely hot dad, Paul Rudd. And Profoundly we, hot father. <laughs> and we are in a hot topic with my daughter, Amanda. Amanda loves hot topic because it fits her goth art style. It's the anti-establishment, bro. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back, as we stated last time on Dream Daddy. There it is. You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Speech, speech, speech. All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. <laughs> Amanda stops immediately. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Rudd had too much blue raspberry slushy and an outing to the mall after begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Oh. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them starts clapping. I bow my head. Yeah. Oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest myself. Not much for a dad to look at in a dead goth and beyond. <laughs> that name Perfect is name. So good. You need to do Peru's band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, or check the clearance bin for hot deals. I'm a thrifty, you know me, I'm a thrifty guy. <laughs> yeah, that's a dad thing, being thrifty. There's a big cardboard box of marked down items. I'm pretty sure $4 for purple eyeliner is a good deal, I think. I wonder if I would look good in purple eyeliner. Yeah, you would. Hell yes, I would. <laughs> I don't... Look, this is very important to me. I Perfect. overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought the out when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of an Edwar Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. <laughs> I can't tell if they are Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. <laughs> Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh. Hey, Dadtron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt on the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull something up. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag, and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool. Long Haul Paranormal Ice, ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love this game. Beautiful satire. I'm going to get fat. You're going to get fat. I'm, I'm worried I'm going to get fat in this game. Eating all this shit? Yeah, I'm not controlling what he eats. Trying to keep that tight dad bod? I'm trying to keep a fit dad bod, not just a tight one. Okay. 
Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. Also, the trucks are haunted. <laughs> This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. <laughs> oh no! The ghost done got control of the truck! I can't steer on them their damn ass roads! <laughs> Let me use the EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits! Flint, we're about to die! Oh, I almost got it! If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying, you're going to die! That's because we are about to die, you! This is art. The episode ends, and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. <laughs> the next morning. Dream Just perfect satire Daddy. on that, that reality show name, though. So good. Well, it was like Canadian Long Road Ice. Yeah, Long road. Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Trucker. I don't know. Good stuff. Morning, sleepyhead. Five, five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes. So get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We are able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, you excited for the cookout today? Ooh. Ooh. I, I gotta put a pun in there. Okay. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a success. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We'll get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. <laughs> I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. <laughs> as dads are, right? I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to the two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. <laughs> Let's take a five-second break to just... Marvel at your Joseph voice, and so I can catch a sick whiff of this vape. <laughs> I'll do it in slow motion. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is Christian... <laughs> Christian and Christy, they're twins. Whoa. They stare creepily and say nothing. <laughs> then, of course, they're their youngest, Chris. Wait, where's Chris? Maybe Mary put him in the crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank God I didn't oh. buy her a drink. How could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? I should have seen it with the cross necklace. Fuck me. You, you missed out on all the obvious signs. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Chris to bed? Ah. I'll have to go look for him. <laughs> what? You'll have to? Oh. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Paul and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. 
Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. <laughs> Charmed. Oh, wait, no, sorry, that's you. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. <gasps> oh, God, this is so awkward. <laughs> I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife had the wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoyed the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. <laughs> I didn't think that said guys for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread on the table. I picked up some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh. I don't want to have to make new friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. <laughs> Dad. Uh, they're going to talk to me about the weather. <laughs> go. Do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Oh, dang. Robert's here? <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Who's first? <laughs> Burger time. <sighs> Was Robert the dude I fucked? Yep. Not talking to Robert. You're, you're gonna give That's a one children. and done. That's a one and done. Pump and dump. Jizz and jet. Uh, who was her teacher? It was Hugo, right? Yep. Who's Matt? Matt is the barista cool guy. Okay. These people seem cool. Um. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on smiling politely. I walk over to say hello, because he's my oldest friend. That's my thought process. Yep. Looks like he's got a bald. My God. Matt's packing heat. Well, I don't I can you massage it with my mouse. Oh, boy. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place, and try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism as America, in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which the work of art was created. Matt and Hugo seem so busy talking they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other day? Great! Little River here is a great cheerleader, aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. You can do it, Dad! I'm so proud of you! I'm sorry for pooping on you! She must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Sorry? Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How are you settling in? I... <laughs> almost done. <laughs> There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Oh. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. <laughs> hey, she takes after her dad. Paul, are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? Oh, sorry, that was not it, but all right. Oh, man, how do I do this voice? Yeah, this is all you. It's, <laughs> a, fl <laughs> it's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Oh, my God, he's so adorable. <laughs> he's just the cutest. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Hmm. Nope. 
but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. <laughs> hey, Paul, this is my daughter. I don't know what voice I'm fine. Flim Hello. losing it. I'm Carmen Sita. <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, <sighs> look, I'm making friends. What? Nothing. What? <laughs> Nothing. All right. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and your teacher. <gasps> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still going to get me that overdue term paper? Dad. Ha <laughs> ha Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation <laughs> like a champ. <laughs> she learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very oh. proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where'd my son go? Oh. Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his uh. eyes go wide. Ernest? Ernest Hemingway Vega? Are you smoking? Hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. <laughs> Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. That last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants, nearly burned down half the yard. In the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread into my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. Yes. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Damn it, of course they made Hugo have a troubled son. Of course, right? Fuck! Are you hot on Hugo? I'm hot on Hugo! Hot for Hugo? I'm hot for Hugo! Damn. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Paul, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. I got Ernest. Got it. Perfect. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Hmm? Ernest. Okay, okay. I'm in eighth grade. God. Are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Er, yeah. Good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. <laughs> sure. Ouch. I don't know. Ernest! Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and oh. sighs. I'm so sorry. He's been having a really tough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See? That right there. You can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long? Sorry. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be cool dads? Oh. I, uh, don't know. Yeah, sounds great. I just think we have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine that once raged against and ex Wow, we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Oh. <laughs> I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um, as much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? 
Tyler, I think we should continue this conversation next episode. This is getting hot and heavy. It's Let's see where this heavy. goes. Barbecue part two coming in next. Bar- barbecue part two, the follow up you've all been waiting for. The Tyler Perry movie you've all been waiting for. Medea's barbecue. Next. Is up. that copyrighted? We gotta get. We gotta. We gotta copyright that. Uh, we'll get that. He's already got every Medea possible movie title in the future. Fuck. Good move, TP. See you next time.